Hello all, we now start looking at proximal methods that generalize the projected algorithms that we have been looking at. This is an important algorithm because it ties together all the algorithms that we have seen so far. You will see that the generalization works out quite nicely and once you understand the link, you will be able to write down and analyze the proximal variant of any algorithm whose pro projected variant exists. We will start looking at a more general problem which is also called the composite form, which is that x star is equal to r min over x capital F of x, which is defined as f of x plus h of x, where f is smooth and h is convex. Further, as usual, we assume that all functions are proper closed and the domain of h is in the relative interior of the domain of f. The composite form subsumes the constraint problems that we have been looking since the assumptions allow you to set h to be the indicator function of a closed convex set calligraphic x. The optimality condition for this problem is given by minus gradient of f of x star is a subgradient of h at x star. Looking at this problem it should be clear that it is very natural generalization of the constraint optimization problem. In fact, an important point to note here is that in constraint optimization, we never needed to use any other property of calligraphic X other than the fact that it is closed convex so that the subgradient of the indicator function exists. So if we assume similarly that the subgradient of H always exists, every single property that we established for the projection should also be true and the whole analysis should carry over. We will see that that is exactly the case. Prox with respect to h of x is equal to r min over u h of u plus half norm square of x minus u where we are using an inner product norm as in the case of projection. Now here since h is convex you can see that the objective function should be at least one strongly convex so that the prox of x is unique. Suppose that u is the prox of x. Then we know from the optimality conditions of the problem that x minus u is a subgradient of h at u. Alternatively, we can use the definition of the subgradient which implies that inner product of x minus u comma y minus u is less than equal to h of y minus h of u for all x y and u in prox of x. The last property is also called the prox theorem and is similar to another property that we have seen in the context of projection that is the angle property. Here the angle property is therefore slightly modified and we are using the same thing on the left but the right hand side instead of being 0 it is hy minus h of u. Of course if h was an indicator function the right hand side would again be 0. Again as in the case of projection operation we also have the firm non-expansiveness property which says that inner product of x minus y comma prox of x minus prox of y is greater than equal to norm square of prox of x minus prox of y. So in the form of this inequality is same but the projection is replaced with the proximal. The proof also proceeds in the same way. Let us denote u as prox of x and v as prox of y and then let us write down the prox theorem that we established in the previous slide for u and v as h of v is greater than equal to h of u plus inner product of x minus u comma v minus u and then again write the same thing with u and v interchanged. So h of u is greater than equal to h of v plus inner product of y minus v comma u minus v. So adding these two together we obtain that 0 is greater than equal to inner product of y minus x plus u minus v with u minus v which upon rearranging gives us the required result. As earlier the firm non-expansiveness also implies the non-expansiveness of the prox operator that is norm of prox of x minus prox of y is less than equal to norm of x minus y. If you remember we used the non-expansiveness property in a number of proofs so the only change in those proofs will be that we will use the non-expensiveness of the prox instead. 
the Mohue decomposition is interesting and this result does not arise in the context of projection. It says that for any closed and convex function h, we have that prox h of x plus prox h star of x is equal to x. So in other words, if you know the proximal with respect to h, then calculating the proximal with respect to h star is very straightforward. The Mohue decomposition is a direct implication of the conjugate subgradient theorem. Suppose that u is the proximal of x with respect to h or equivalently x minus u is a subgradient of h at u. So applying the conjugate subgradient theorem, we obtain that u is a subgradient of h star at x minus u. Or in other words, x minus u is the proximal of x with respect to h star. So if we just add these two inequalities, we get the required result. So far we have seen two properties that are similar to the projection operator and one new property. For the rest of the video, we will look at some examples of the proximal operator applied to various kinds of functions. We can calculate the prox of a norm function by simply recalling the definition of the support function. The support of calligraphic x at x is given by max over y in calligraphic x inner product of x comma y for closed convex calligraphic x. Now recall that we earlier derived the conjugate of the support function, so which turns out to be the indicator function. Therefore we have that prox with respect to the support cal of calligraphic x plus prox with respect to the indicator function is equal to x. Now prox with respect to indicator function is nothing but the projection. So the prox with respect to the support is equal to x minus projection of x onto calligraphic x. We can apply it to the norm ball which is that x such that norm of x is less than or equal to 1 whose support is given by dual norm of x. This allows us to write the prox of the norm as prox with respect to norm of x is equal to x minus projection of x onto b star where b star is the dual norm ball which is the set of all x such that dual norm of x is less than or equal to 1. So in the last slide we saw how to calculate the prox of any arbitrary norm. Let us calculate the prox of x with respect to the L1 norm using another way. The prox operation is separable that is if h of x1 comma x2 is equal to h1 of x1 plus h2 of x2 then you can see that the prox with respect to h1 and h2 can be separately calculated at x1 and x2 respectively and then the result can be stacked in order to get prox with respect to h. The point really simplifies the calculation of the prox for L1 norm because L1 norm is separable. Let h of x equal to lambda times L1 norm of x which is equal to lambda times summation over i from 1 to n absolute value of xi. Also the prox of lambda times the absolute value is given by the soft thresholding operator that is prox with respect to lambda times absolute value of x is the soft thresholding t lambda of x which is equal to x minus lambda for x greater than or equal to lambda, 0 for x between minus lambda and lambda and x plus lambda for x less than or equal to minus lambda. So this implies that the ith entry of the prox of x with respect to the L1 norm is the soft thresholded version of xi that is prox with respect to h of x ith entry is t lambda of xi for i equal to 1 to n. You can verify that the result derived in the previous slide for L1 norm is the same that is obtained here. Sometimes we can apply certain composition rules to calculate the prox easily. First note that if prox with respect to g is known Usually the same approach can be used to calculate the prox with respect to lambda times g where lambda is greater than 0. In fact we will rely on this property in the proximal gradient algorithm also because we will need prox with respect to eta times h. Suppose that h of x is equal to lambda times g of x by lambda for lambda greater than 0. Then let us calculate the prox with respect to h of x. 
which is given by prox with respect to h of x is equal to arg min over u lambda times g u by lambda plus half norm square of x minus u. We can divide the objective function by a positive number lambda so as to write it as arg min over u g of u by lambda plus 1 by 2 lambda x minus u norm square. Now we need to do a change of variables. So we set z equal to u by lambda so that prox with respect to h of x is equal to lambda times arg min over z gz plus 1 by 2 lambda norm square of x minus lambda z. Again divide the objective function by lambda so as to obtain lambda times arg min over z 1 by lambda gz plus half norm square of x my lambda minus z. Looking at this carefully, we can see that this is equal to lambda times prox with respect to g by lambda of x by lambda. So this example demonstrates some of the manipulations that we can do when dealing with the prox function. We can use the result in the previous slide so as to develop a scaled version of the Mohu decomposition. If lambda is greater than 0, then it holds that prox with respect to lambda h of x plus prox with respect to lambda h star of x is equal to x. The conjugate of lambda h can be calculated as conjugate of lambda h as a function of y is equal to min over x inner product of x comma y minus lambda h of x which is equal to lambda times min over x inner product of x comma y by lambda minus h of x which is equal to lambda times h star of y by lambda. In the previous slide we saw that prox with respect to lambda times g as a function of x by lambda is given by lambda times prox with respect to g by lambda of x by lambda which implies that prox of lambda h x plus lambda times prox of 1 by lambda h star of x by lambda is equal to x. So this is the scaled version of the Mohu decomposition. You can equivalently rewrite it as prox with respect to h star by lambda of x is equal to x minus 1 by lambda prox with respect to lambda h calculated at lambda x which is useful since we don't need to calculate h star in closed form in order to calculate the prox with respect to h star or its scaled version. Let us calculate the prox with respect to the function of the norm that is h of x equal to g of norm of x where g is a scalar function. The prox is given by prox with respect to h of x is equal to arg min over u g of norm of u plus half norm square of x minus u. To find this we first split the problem into two parts as arg min over alpha greater than 0 min over norm of u equal to alpha g of alpha plus half alpha square minus inner product of u comma x where we have expanded the norm term since it is an inner product norm and removed all the constants from the objective. Now we already know how to solve the inner problem. In fact, min over norm u equal to alpha minus inner product of u comma x is equal to minus of max over norm z equal to 1 alpha times inner product of z comma x which is equal to minus alpha times norm of x. So we can write this because we are in an inner product space and in such a space all norms are self-dual. It remains to substitute it back so that the optimal alpha is given by arg min over alpha greater than 0 g alpha plus half alpha square minus alpha norm of x which can be written as arg min over alpha greater than 0 g alpha plus half of square of alpha minus norm of x which is nothing but prox with respect to g of norm of x. So substituting it back we obtain that prox with respect to h of x equal to prox with respect to g of norm of x times x divided by norm of x. So the prox with respect to h 
is written as a product of blocks with respect to G and X by norm of X. So that is all for this video. We have looked at several properties of the PROX operator. In the next video, we will start looking at the oracle complexity analysis of the proximal gradient method.